Hey everyone, ocean conservation and marine life expert Jacqueline Friedlander here and today we are in Crystal River, Florida with the Kings Bay Restoration Project and we are going to learn how to plant eelgrass. But this is not like regular gardening, we are going to be planting eelgrass underwater. What exactly is eelgrass? Great question. I talked with Carter Henney and he explained to me why it's so important to the Crystal River ecosystem. Eelgrass is important because it's the basis of the food chain. Anything that's a herbivore or an omnivore underwater is eating the eelgrass. A few examples of these animals that eat eelgrass are turtles, manatees, blue crabs, and ducks. What are the steps for planting eelgrass? Just like a farmer on land would do, the first step is getting the field or the pasture or the bottom correct. In this particular case, there was a lot of organic material that had been built up over time because of septic tanks, stormwater runoff, and a couple other different sources of nutrients. All of this muck has to be removed in order for the eelgrass to thrive. Removing that material is a big process and requires a whole construction team. I spoke with Charlie Gertz to learn about the first step in the soil preparation process. We're basically vacuuming the bottom of the canals. It's like a big vacuum system. The hoses have suction to it, and the divers swim across the bottom and just clean up whatever allergy and limbia that's left behind. Limbia, a species of cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria, a category of bacteria that obtain their energy through photosynthesis or the process of using the sun to create food from carbon dioxide and water. We're getting back to the original grade of the material. So we're getting back down to the hard pan, the nice clean sand. And by using the vacuum, we're allowing to get all the dirty material out of here and get the clean stuff back. Now that it's been vacuumed up, where does all the muck go? Howard Miller gave me a tour of the construction site so I could learn about that. When I got here, they gave me this fashion hat and a nifty vest. How come? Well, safety is the most important thing on a construction site. A hard hat to protect our head a bright visible safety vest so everybody can see us, hard steel-toed boots to protect our feet, most important, safety goggles to protect our eyes. So here's some safety goggles for you. Let's go look at the job site. Sounds great. What are these bags for? The bags catch some of the material that's being pumped from the canal. When the water comes from the canal, it's full of all types of muck. When the muck gets inside the bag, it gets caught up inside the edges of the bag. We have people that are up on top of the bags with vibrating machines, and they vibrate the bags so that the material is loosened and drops and sinks to the bottom of the bag. Then the water can secrete up through the top of the bags and then be returned to the canal nice and clean. And now the ground's ready to plant. We take the grasses from the nursery and then we bring them out and then we have divers go down and plant them by hand. Can you teach me how to plant eelgrass? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. It took a few minutes to get to the planting site by boat. On the way, there was some eelgrass floating at the surface, so we took a look at it. So this is the eelgrass. This one's getting munched on. Eelgrass leaves are normally pointy. Oh. And these are squared off on the top. Flat. That means there are manatees close by. Manatees are close by. We continued to the planting site, and sure enough, there were two manatees swimming alongside the boat. We've already seen blue crabs and manatees from the boat. Let's plant some eelgrass and see what other animals we can find in the water. I hopped in the water to plant. I learned from Carter that the few plants I planted today will result in the growth of many more plants. They spread out through a couple different ways. One is rhizomal growth. Rhizome growth a way for a plant to create new plants by striking new roots out of their nodes down into the soil and shooting new stems up to the surface. So the plants will just grow out from side to side to side and keep making clones of themselves. Two is, it's a dioecious plant. Dioecious plant species. Plants that have the male and female reproductive structure on separate plants. So they'll have male and female flowers. The female flower will come up to the surface and the male pollen will get to the flower, germinate, and you'll have a seed pod. A seed pod looks like a green bean, and those spread out everywhere. And third is as the manatees, ducks, and turtles are eating the grasses, they're breaking little snippets off. These little shoots float around and they'll sink down. So what we're seeing in Crystal River is we initially planted five and a half acres, but we're starting to see grasses all around the bay. Over 
20 acres at least of grasses where it's spread out. Wow, that's incredible. So you're already seeing the result of your work. Absolutely. The organization that started the Kings Bay Restoration Project and brought Carter, Charlie, Howard, and many others on board to plant eelgrass is Save Crystal River. I spoke with some of the board members, employees, and volunteers, and they are all working toward a very specific goal. Our goal is to have the river restored to its original beauty by July 2nd of 2023, which is the 100th anniversary of the city of Crystal River. I'll be 13 by then. We're proving that it can be done. We have lots of ways for the community to get involved. Um, things you can do at your own home, you can reduce the amount of fertilizer you put on your lawn, which then runs into our river and creates those algal blooms that we don't like. Um, you can be really careful when you're boating and watch your anchors and not drag them through the eelgrass and dig up our grass, or be careful with the motor and the prop. If you run aground, you can tear up our eelgrass and create scars, which are really damaging to this ecosystem. It fragments it and then the fish can't move from one patch to the other. And you can also be good stewards and plant eelgrass in your own backyards if you live on the water, or you can come and get involved with our group. The community is helping with this project so much. The, the community has been 100% behind us, and our government um, from the city, the county, and the legislature has been 100% behind us every step of the way. Some of them at the school are helping us when we're teaching the kids about it and doing projects at the school. On my last day in Florida, I did a Friends with Fins author visit and marine conservation presentation at Crystal River Primary School. I shared my books, some hands-on activities, and some marine science knowledge with the students, and then they shared their love of eelgrass and the Save Crystal River project with me. One of their teachers even helped them write a song about it. We want our water nice and clean, nice and clean, nice and clean. We want our water nice and clean. We play rockstar. I had so much fun learning about eelgrass and the great work that Save Crystal River is doing. Pretty soon, the water there will be just as clear as the water behind me. If you want weekly ocean and conservation information, click subscribe, and I will see you next Friends with Fins Friday. Thanks for watching.